Hello, my name is Ruben, presenting to you our latest work titled Multi-Layered Safety for Legged Robots via Control Barrier Functions and Model Predictive Control. This work was a collaboration between the Robotic Systems Lab at ETH and the Ember Lab at Caltech. It starts with looking at some of the goals that we had at the beginning of this project. So first of all, we want to do dynamic locomotion, which means that as shown on this slide, that there might be contact phases that are not statically stable. So the robot really needs to think about where to place its feet in the world to stabilize itself. But then at the same time, we have terrain constraints. So in this case, we have the stepping stones and the robot must place its feet on the individual stones and not in between. And then finally, we wanna study how these requirements come together in a multi-layered control setup. So we'll have a planner, which has a longer horizon, but is typically a bit slower. And then underneath, we'll have a tracking controller, which is faster to execute this plan. Let's start with an overview of the method. On the top, we assume we have given a segmented terrain, which consists of planes and their outer boundary. And we'll have some user commands. In this case, they'll, there'll be a gate pattern and velocity references for the base. Those two together form the terrain constraints around the normal, nominal gates. And these terrain constraints are to be fed into both of the control layers. So as the planner, we have here a model predictive controller, which uses a simplified model. And in, by having a horizon, it can reason about dynamic locomotion and terrain constraints across this horizon. As a tracking controller, we have a whole body controller, which executes at a high frequency and decides the torque based on the full rigid body dynamics of the system. And finally, we propose to use control barrier functions to tie it all together. So this will be the method that translates the terrain constraints into concrete constraints for the MPC and whole body controller. And in the end, it will also sort of, um, be a certificate that will show us that the closed loop system actually will satisfy the terrain constraints. This slide then also gives the agenda for this talk. So first I'll start discussing the model predictive controller and whole body controller. And afterwards we'll move on to the control barrier functions and see how they tie in. First of all, we have the model predictive controller, which builds on our previous work. For the dynamics, we assume a fixed inertia around the center of the mass, and we consider the legs only ki kinematically. So that gives us the 12 center of mass states and joint positions. And as control inputs, we have contact forces at the, at the feet and the joint velocities. Over that model, we pull some constraints. So for stance legs, we want it to be zero foot velocity and the, friction, the contact forces need to be within the friction cone constraint. And for swing legs, we require zero contact forces and some ground clearance. And these constraints are then imposed based on the predefined gate pattern. So the MPC doesn't alter the gate timings itself. Moving on, we have the hierarchical whole body controller, which considers the full nonlinear dynamics of the robot, and it creates an optimization over generalized accelerations and contact forces. Then we're able to impose a hierarchy of tasks, which are specified through equality and inequality constraints. And in this work, we have at the highest priority all the constraints that encode physics, basically. And to that set, we'll add also the control barrier constraints, which are introduced later. Below that, we have the tracking constraints. So tracking the desired reference for the torso and the swing legs. And at the lowest priority, we have contact force tracking, which then regulates the internal forces between the feet. Then on to the control barrier functions. For the precise mathematical definitions, I would like to refer to the paper and the references therein. But for this talk, I would just want to give some intuition of what's going on. Starting with a control fine system and after plugging in our controller, K of XT, we will create some closed loop dynamics. And what we're going to do is to think about the safety of a set with respect to this closed loop dynamics. And a set is in this case defined through a function H of X of T and the interior of the set will be wherever this function is greater than zero. Now, what we want from our controller is that it renders this set forward invariant under the closed loop dynamics, meaning that if we start inside, we are guaranteed to remain inside for all future time. 
And additionally, what we would really like is if we do happen to find ourselves outside of the safe set, we want that the controller makes a reasonable effort to get back to the interior. And this can all be achieved through what is called the control bearer function. This gives us a sufficient pointwise in time condition that tells us how to pick control inputs that satisfy the safety requirements. And this constraint requires that we make the time derivative of h bigger than some negative scaling vector alpha of the original function h. And we see how the control input u enters through the dynamics this time derivative of the barrier function h. Now this theoretical framework has led to several practical controllers in the literature. And a popular one is the CBFQP as shown here. What it does, it takes a reference controller, KD, and it tries to find an input that is as close as possible to the reference while at the same time satisfying the CBF constraint. We will use this controller as well as a baseline in our results. Then speaking more concretely about CBFs in the context of robotic systems, we have here the rigid body dynamics and we would like to put some constraints over the configuration of the robot. Then when we take the first order CBF, we get a condition over the velocity basically of the robotic system. So if you want now a condition with respect to the torques, we have to do some more work. And what's done there in the literature is what is called an exponential barrier function. So it takes the first barrier function as a new equality constraint and then places an additional barrier function over this extra constraint. Now, satisfying this second order CBF is then also guaranteed to keep us within the original safe set. In the context of our stepping stone problem, the configuration constraint is as follows. We define the barrier through the projection of the foot on the target plane and create a shrinking set of half spaces. This shrinking set is in this case the safe set and it will shrink to lie on top of the stepping stone towards the end of the swing phase. Staying within the safe set thus guarantees that we end up on top of the stone. And from that single configuration constraint, we can derive the two CBFs. The first one, the kinematic one will enter the MPC and the torque level constraint will enter the whole body controller. With all the constraints defined, we can move on and see how this setup performs in hardware. Here, we have initialized the robot on a pre-mapped environment. And from there, we command it to trot and basically give it some velocity commands. From those input, it autonomously decides on which of the stepping stones to step. And through the MPC, it decides which location to step exactly. Then the whole body controller ensures that this plan is executed with a high quality. Showing here the internal state of the MPC, we see again the various safe sets as they appear during each of the swing phases to ensure that we land on the next stepping stone. As we move here onto the next platform, we see how the controller coordinates the base and stepping locations to achieve this dynamic locomotion across the environment. And because doing a detailed comparison between different controllers on the hardware is quite difficult, we also do some more controlled simulation studies to compare the difference between different methods. So here we first have the proposed method, navigating our stepping stone scenario, where the stones are randomly spaced in a forward direction. We give the controller here a desired velocity of 0.25 meters per second, and keep this velocity constant until it reaches the end of the scenario. You can now compare this to the CBFQP approach, which only has the terrain constraints in the lowest filter of the controller. So we saw that this CBFQP controller does well for a few steps, but then quickly falls when the scenario becomes more difficult. You can have here a more detailed look at what was going on. So here on the left, we have controller one, which was the CBFQP, and it doesn't have any terrain related constraints in the NPC, and it only has it in the tracking controller basically. So that's the reason that it satisfies the terrain constraints quite well for the first few steps, 
but then it lacks this long-term horizon to coordinate dynamic locomotion and the stepping constraints together. Then as a second group of controllers, we can compare to controllers that have constraints only at the MPC level. So controller two has them as CBFs, and in controller three, we formulate them differently as state constraints. So this is basically an inequality on the landing location of the foot to be on top of the stepping stone. And we see that both these controllers reach the end of the scenario, but both of them also have some missteps. So we record how many times they step just outside of the boundary of the stepping stone and by how much. So we can do better and we can do better by including terrain constraints as well in the tracking controller. So these last two controllers now have terrain constraints both at MPC level and at tracking level. And number four has it as state constraints and number five, our proposed method has it as CBFs on both levels. Now both these controllers achieve the full scenario without any missteps, but when we compare them on the safety metric, so how often do they exit the safe set, we see that controller number five spends the least time outside of this safe set. And to have a more detailed look uh, to see why that happens, we look here at the first swing phase of both controllers. So at the top one, we have the one with MVC state constraints, and in the bottom one, the CBF constraints. So you'll notice that they have a very different swing plan for the upcoming swing phase. And this is uh, confirmed in the graphs on the right. So we plot there the plan of the MPC with respect to the safe set, and then the executed one, uh, where the whole body controller has executed the plan. So on the top, we see that the MPC does, in the end, land within the safe set, but because it doesn't have the CBF constraint, it exits the safe set um, in the middle of the swing phase. And then because the whole body controller does have the CBF constraint, it is forced to deviate from the plan. And finally, in the bottom, we see when both have the CBF derived from the same constraint, they are consistent and the plan and the executed um, swing trajectory are very close. So in conclusion, we can say that including terrain constraints on both planning and tracking level is beneficial and CBFs are a great way to coordinate the constraints that you can formulate at these different layers. Additionally, we wanna note this is the first hardware demonstrations of using CBF to solve this stepping stone locomotion problem. And we think it's really important to add this additional planning layer because most of the references have only used the CBF QP controller. Finally, for future work, we would like to integrate this pipeline now with online perception, mapping and terrain segmentation. Because in this work, the terrain was still pre-mapped and we would like to do that online so we can send the robot into the wild. And on that last note, I would like to give a preview of what is coming and give some preliminary results of putting this all together. Here we have the exactly the same control setup as I presented today, but now connected with some online mapping and se terrain segmentation. And with that, I thank you for your attention and leave you with the rest of this video.